You may be seated. Our scripture lesson today comes from Exodus, the 17th chapter, verses 8 through 13. Hear now the word of the Lord. While the people of Israel were still at Rephidim, the warriors of Amalek came to fight against them. Moses commanded Joshua, call the Israelites to arms and fight the army of Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded. He led his men out to fight the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of a nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff with his hands, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites gained the upper hand. Moses' arms finally became too tired to hold up the staff any longer. So Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side, holding up his hands until sunset. As a result, Joshua and his troops were able to crush the army of Amalek. Thus ends this reading of God's holy word. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our disciple class was reading Exodus a few weeks ago. And the passage that I just read seemed appropriate to me as a way to finish up our stewardship month because it, was, it makes very clear that God uses all of us in many different ways to accomplish the things that God wants to get done. Sometimes God calls us to be in the spotlight and sometimes in the shadows. But no matter what our role is, it is necessary and important. Let's look at how this plays out with the Israelites. But first, I want to provide a little context. The Israelites had been living in Egypt for over 400 years. And while they were there, they had multiplied, and the Egyptians got scared of them. And so they enslaved the Israelites. God called Moses to lead the Israelites to freedom. But Moses didn't think he was capable of doing that, so God called Aaron, his brother, to help him. They went to Pharaoh repeatedly, but Pharaoh did not want to lose his labor force, so he continued to refuse Moses' request to free the Israelites even though God, through Moses, had been sending plagues. God then sent the final plague, the death of the firstborn of every household in the land. Now, this plague did not hit the Israelite families because they had followed God's command to sacrifice a lamb and to put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and on the lentils of their house so that the angel of death would pass over them. After this plague, Pharaoh finally figured out that he needed to let the Israelites go and allowed them to leave, and they left immediately. But Pharaoh, on later reflection, decided that he really wanted them back, so he chased them and cornered them against the Red Sea. Now, God used Moses holding the staff of God to part the Red Sea, and the Israelites walked through on dry land. But when Pharaoh chased them into the sea, the waters came back and killed all of Pharaoh's army. So after getting through the Red Sea and escaping the Egyptians, God provided water 
for the Israelites as they were wandering in the wilderness and manna for them to eat. God was taking care of all of their needs. But now the Israelites face another threat. It's not the mighty Egyptian army, and it's not starvation or dehydration. They face Amalek and his army. And God decides that it's time for them to play an active role in maintaining their freedom. Up until now, God has primarily used Moses to do the divine work. But at Rephidium, God shows the Israelites that by working together, they can triumph. God used a large group of Israelites that day to save the people, and they were used in different ways. We have Joshua, who was tasked with gathering men to go out and actually fight. He and his crew were going to be the ones in combat with the troops of Amalek. Now, no war is easy. No fight is easy. But this might have been even harder for the Israelites because they were newly freed slaves. They had been free for probably only a couple of months at this time. So they were ill-equipped to fight an army. But they take, made the step, took the step, and it took a lot of courage to go out on that field and face the army of Amalek. But they knew that God, through Moses, was with them. So we also have Moses, who went up on the top of the hill, holding the staff of God in his hands. Now, we aren't really sure what the significance of that is. He could have been watching the battle and praying from a nice upper vantage point. Or his being up there holding the staff could have signaled to the troops that God was, in fact, with them. We can only speculate because the Bible is not real clear on that. But we do know that when Moses held his hands up with the staff of God, the Israelites were winning, but when he lowered their, his hands, they started to lose. The thing is, as Teddy found out, it's hard to hold your hands up with something heavy. Now, staff, I don't know how heavy it was, but a battle is a long-term proposition. And so Moses was holding his hands up all day. Now, that's hard for a young person, and Moses was about 80 at this time. So as the day wore on, he had to lower his arms more and more. He was physically incapable of keeping them up. And so there was a big risk that Joshua would lose the battle. That's where Aaron and her come in. They accompanied Moses to the hilltop. They noticed what was going on with Moses, and they took action. They stepped in to support Moses. They had him sit down on a rock, and then they held his arms up for him. They helped him hold his hands up until Joshua had won the battle. Now, just like with Joshua, Moses, Aaron, and Hur, many times God calls us to do things that are a group effort. They must be accomplished together because they're too big to get done alone. Moses standing on the top of that hill with his hands raised would not have been able to defeat the army of Amalek without Joshua and his troops being willing to actually do the fighting. Joshua on his own would not have been successful without Moses' support and, more importantly, God's power. And Moses couldn't give full support to the fighters by holding his arms up without Aaron and her. 
They all worked together to accomplish what God wanted them to do. The same is true today. God uses us to do divine work. God will supply the strength, the power, and the ideas. But God expects us, all of us, to work together to accomplish the task at hand. For instance, we have a welcome table meal coming up a week from tomorrow. A meal like this is for our friends in the community who face food insecurity. Now to put on a meal like this, it takes cooks, it takes servers, it takes people to set up, and then people to clean up. And aside from the people who are actively working at the event, this whole effort is covered in prayer and financially supported by our congregation. We couldn't do it if we didn't work together. Now, thankfully, we have a loving community of faith here at Washington Street United Methodist Church. We care about our church family, our community, and our world. And we have ministries to help all of those. We understand that we can't do these ministries on our own. However, we know that together we can accomplish big things. Now, it's fairly easy to see with a welcome table meal or an international mission trip that we need to work together on these large projects and church ministries. But my friends, we also need each other in our everyday lives. We all need friends like Aaron and her who will stick with us and hold us up be it literally or figuratively. They are essential for the Christian journey. There are times when each of us will come to a point in our lives when we feel alone, lost, or forsaken. At these times, we might not have the ability to pray or the strength to keep going. It's in these times that we need good friends, ones who will pray for and with us, ones who will sit with us and listen to us, and ones who will do things for us that we just can't do at that time. These are the people that God sends to accompany us through the trials of life. They can help pull us over the finish line when we don't think we have anything left. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what this story teaches us, that together we can accomplish anything. It demonstrates how we need to work together, helping each other to achieve God's purposes in our lives and in this world. Now, it's easy to see how Aaron and Hur were a help to Moses and Joshua in the fight with the army of Amalek. However, most of the time, the effects of our prayers, encouragement, and help aren't as readily apparent. But they still matter, and they're still important. Never underestimate the importance of being present with someone especially in difficult times. Having people you can count on is important, but it's also important to be a person that others can count on. For instance, my first cousin is currently going through a very tough time. Months ago, she was diagnosed with myelodysplastic syndrome, which is a blood cancer. She's been through chemo and radiation and other treatments. And a few weeks ago, she had a stem cell transplant. She well knows the importance of being together in difficulty. 
She knows that God is with her in her struggle, but God is using the people around her and actually all over to accomplish the divine work. Her doctors and nurses are in the fight against cancer right there with her. But she is also not alone. In addition to God's presence and those medical people with her, she is being lifted up in prayer by all of her family and friends and even friends of friends. These prayers give her support when she feels weak. Also, her daughter is there with her, literally holding her up when she needs it. God is using all these many people to sustain her as she fights this battle. Every time I talk to her, I'm amazed at how strong she sounds, how positive and courageous. She is being encouraged and lifted up by the thoughts, prayers, and actions of others. That's what a life of faith is, my friends. It's being joined to God and others in ways that make us stronger. It's the willingness to be used by God to help others. It's the belief that together we can live a life of love and service, that we can support others, and that we can make a real difference in the world around us. Thanks be to God.